sort of three things that you need to make charcoal. One is some sort of material that has carbon in it. Um, and for the type of charcoal we make, we use agricultural waste material. People often use trees, uh, wood, etc. But you need something that has carbon in it to start. The other thing is you need heat to show the airflow through the drum, which allows the material to burn at a high temperature that produces good quality charcoal, but then also allows you to shut off um, and seal it to prevent oxygen, which allows the carbonization process to happen. So what we do is we actually we put the drum up on three stones that lets more air flow through it. And, um, and the other thing we do is as we're filling it, we'll, um, we'll get a large stick that we'll put in the middle and that'll allow a chimney to be there. So again, you get nice air flow through it. It takes um, uh, easily flammable material like these corn husks and just put them in here and they'll be sort of like fuses. And then you just light a fire underneath and it works much better if you light from the bottom up. Another thing that I learned in my most recent trip to Haiti, it's easier if you do this before you load this fully and have it balanced on the rocks. It's remarkable how um, common sense comes from the field, not from academia. because later on in the process you'll be kicking it out and the less and that's when the flames are flying out of it so the less far you have to do that so you can have sort of on the edges so that it's easy to pull them out so the next thing we'll do is we'll put a, a large stick in the middle and then we'll just take all these corn stacks and we'll cram them in around the edge Okay. We can pack it pretty dense. You might need to break it a little bit. And then just sort of shove it around. And we'll do that until it's full. You don't want it sticking out because we're going to have to cover it. Okay. Later on. Yeah. Yeah, and that's especially good because oftentimes you'll have pockets that are just a little bit colder and so you'll get a chunk which isn't carbonized. So if you you do want to go all around and make sure that all of them are, yeah. But wait until it's actually flamey rather than smoky. So this kind of smoke will last for about five minutes. It's just that it's too early. This is really, like, it's really wet. It's really wet. Yeah, like you even feel some condensation onto your hands. And so this is sort of an interesting to show people that like Everything. this is what you're getting out of the material no. that they're going to be burning. No. So this is what you're preventing from being in the kitchen while they're cooking. Is all this stuff is turning off right now. Whoa! Mm. Yeah, was that dramatic or what? <laughs> now cook your bread, folks. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Yeah, let's go. So one of the things, that if, if you close it too early, then flames will start shooting out of the bottom. And that's a good sign, in which case you want to take this off. Sometimes we have ones that have a handle, so it's easy to just put a stick and take it off. Um, other things you want to do now <laughs> is removing the stones. So, so the way that we do this is one person supports uh, Pete. Oh, we got it. Just oh, we got it. All right, and so let that upside down. So one person supports it with a, a stick, and then, and then another person just kicks away the stone. Oh, stick the stick there. Here we can get the So now what we want to do is we want to seal and prevent any oxygen from getting around the edge. So like keeps doing around here, so hand falls up um, sand. It's not always so lucky that the bottom is as easy as just taking the sand there, but here we are on a beach. Watch out so. for you, so if you're um, you need to go getting sand up. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I get it. Um, Amy, when do we put the lid on? Yeah, so it's not really a science, it's a, li it's a little bit more of an art. So the answer is when it's ready. You let it burn for a while, I kind of look in. This stuff is really light, so it tends to burn pretty quickly. 
Ordinarily, it's something like about five, five between five and ten minutes. If it's something like bamboo, that's really thick, and yeah. so you would leave that for like 10 to 15 minutes. And typically, your first one is where you learn a lot, and your second one is where you do it right. The thing you want to balance is material burning away so you don't get a good yield, and material not being fully carbonized. Okay. So you want everything to be carbonized, but not going up in smoke. That's a little bit warm, but yeah. So the one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you don't get too much sand inside, so if you're a little bit careful taking the sand off the top. Actually, that's a nice yield, and you can see that when you break it open, it's pretty much fully carbonized. And then the next thing you would do is you would take this and we'd probably just put it in a garbage bag and step on it because this stuff is so soft that you can crush it that way. Uh, sometimes people will use a mortar and pestle. There's a lot of different things. Mostly people know how to crush things, so you don't have to show them too much about different technologies for doing that. But. some of your um, your material, you pour it in, basically then hammer, pull this out, and then hammer here, pull this out, and actually you didn't have to pull it out that time, and then give it another tap, and here's your briquette. And you may have noticed the hammer never left my hand until this last step here. So then it was back to the drawing board and Sean and I sort of tripped it down to this which is um, I, sort of only the very essence, bare bones, guts of what you need to make a briquette. As one of the sort of the theories I have of making things affordable, which is if you want to make something 10 times cheaper, get rid of 90% of the material, right? And so now it's, what you do is you scoop it, put it here, put it here. I didn't fill it enough, so it's gonna be a scrawny one, but. Pops out, and here's your briquette. Interesting thing, easier. easier, faster. This yeah. one you can make about six or seven briquettes per minute. This one we've had people make up to 12. But it turned out he didn't have this round stock and so he, he was cutting it on the lathe. Mm -hmm. And you know, similarly here, he didn't have something with the right size hole. So it's like a day and a half, yikes. So that's when we came up with this one, which is a square version. And the great thing about it is that instead of having a hole, you just have two pieces of flat bar. Um, the hole is covered up by this plate anyway, so it doesn't have to be a hole, it can be a channel. Um, and then by using square stock and these flat plates here, uh, you can just cut the material with a hacksaw. You don't need any drills. You do, so it cut the manufacturing cost um, down significantly. So it was interesting because for a couple years now I've been doing that. This is the essence of simplicity right here. And it turns out we were able to make it even cheaper and easier to make by making it square. And again, same sort of thing. You could do stars. You could do stars, you could do heart shapes, moons. It could be lucky charms made of charcoal. <laughs> This one's going to be a little harder to um, press out because in a moment of stupidity, no, 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 I shortened this too much because I wanted it to fit in a block that was the wrong size block. But um, yeah, so you can get these square briquettes as well. These you leave out in the sun to dry. Um, for, depending on how hot it is up here, it's going to be a little while. Um, you know, in Haiti, it's a few days. We tell people we, a week so that they're not burning it before it's, it's completely dry. Another innovation that we've had in making the briquette presses is now we actually have a table that you drill holes in so you don't have to sit there squatting on the ground and um, and you can and what we've done is we've designed it so you can actually put multiple holes in the table so you maybe have five of these presses and one person is just filling fill and then one person yeah. is the hammer and one person's unloading them and drying them and we have this little like uh, assembly line machine or you can if you're just one person you could go like have four or five of these fill 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 hammer 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 unload 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 and it's it's much faster and it's so pleasant doing it at this height